Hey everybody, this is Adam Virgil. In this video, we're going to review the athlete performance testing portion of the Ultimate Athlete Monitoring Toolkit. If you haven't seen the Ultimate Athlete Monitoring Toolkit overview, I recommend that you watch that video first so that you understand the general scope of this project. But in this video, we're going to review what we've done in the athlete performance testing portion. First, we'll go over the dashboard that we create together and how that dashboard works. After that, we'll go over the free data sets that I provide you with to help guide you as you follow along. Let's get into the dashboard. Let's zoom in a little bit. This dashboard serves two purposes. The first is to select an athlete and a testing session of interest to see information about that athlete and how they performed relative to their peers or relative to themselves. We'll go over the interactions and how they work momentarily. The second purpose of this dashboard is to view an athlete's performance data over time so that we can see how things change and where they currently fit. Let's go over how this dashboard works. The first thing that we'll want to do is select an athlete of interest. We can do that right here, either with the drop down menu that includes all of our athletes, or begin typing in the name of our athlete and select them from there. Once we do that, the information on the page will change to reflect information about the athlete that we selected. The next thing that we might want to do is select the testing session of interest. We have a list of our testing sessions for this athlete here. We can click on the drop down menu and select any testing session that we'd like, and the information on the page will change to reflect the data for the athlete that we selected for that testing session. We can also choose how we want to compare this athlete. Currently, we're comparing this athlete to their all time data. We can also compare them to his or her position, his or her team, and within that, we can compare them to the team or position or the athlete's all time average, best, or worst. All that data is here. We also have an opportunity to select any metric in our database that we want. And don't worry, we're going to go over how to do all of this in the tutorial videos. With each of these drop down lists, we can select metrics in our database. For example, maybe we want to see CMJ trial one or counter movement jump trial one. And we can do that here. But for now, let's go back to body weight. As we move down, we have some gauges which compare the athlete's value to their position average. And this is for any metric that we'd like. We can select that through the drop down menu. After that, we have a chart that displays where the athlete fits among their position group. And over here, we have four opportunities to select a metric and see how the athlete compares within their cohort, with the green line being the team best, or the position best, or the athlete's all time best, depending on what we pick here. If we select position, this green line now represents the position best. So that's how that works. And the black line represents the average of whatever we selected, and the red line represents the worst, with the gold bar representing the athlete value. And all of this is completely customizable, as we go through in the tutorial videos. We can select any four metrics that we'd like to represent in these charts. As we move down, we get to an automatic identification area of performance facilitators and defenders as I call them. You might think of them as strengths and weaknesses. And we contextualize these. We learn how to do all this again in the tutorial videos. Then we finally get to the historical data. There's a lot going on here. A lot of it is for show, but you'll be able to pick and choose what you want to display and what you want to work on to provide a dashboard that's meaningful to you. Similar to what we've seen above, we're able to select metrics and see them over time in these two charts here. Also, we can see all of the athletes' data in a table down here. 
and again, we can select whatever metrics we want to go into this table. Right now, we're showing overall score here, but perhaps we want to show body weight. We can do that too. We can also sort this table by anything that we'd like. Right now, it's sorted by date, but perhaps you want to sort it by the overall score. And we develop these scores throughout the tutorial videos. We can always flip the sort around as well, among other features. We can also control the dates that show up in these reports. Currently, we're showing data from 10-15-2019 to 11-21-2021. Perhaps we only want to show data up to 11-5-2019. We can do that, but first let's sort this by date. Notice that we have some data here that's beyond 11-5-2019. We can just enter in a new date. And our charts will change. Similarly, we define specific season phases that might be of interest to us, which allow us to dynamically interact with our data. For example, if we just wanted to see this athlete's performance from spring to spring, and these can be anything. I have spring, summer, and winter as season phases, but you might have in-season, off-season, and training camp. So if we want to see an athlete's values from spring to spring, or training, tra training camp to training camp, we can deselect what we don't want to see, or any combination of our phases that we have. That'll allow you to contextualize your insights. That's how the dashboard works. Now let's move on to the data sets that you'll be provided with, which you should download and use as a guide as you follow along if you decide to participate in this project. Let's hop over there now. This is what you'll be provided with. I just wanted to give you a taste so that you know what you're looking at here. We have athletes' names, which are really important, the dates that they did their testing sessions, and participation status, which is optional. All of these things are optional. They're all dependent on whether or not you collect them. However, this is what I'm providing you with, and we're going to use these fields to interact with our dashboard. Hopefully, my tutorial videos will give you the context that you need so that you can transform this database into something that will work for you in your environment. We also have an athlete's position, which we'll automatically get from athlete profiles. We'll go over athlete profiles in a moment. We also have the athlete's team. These two fields are important when you're calculating a team or a position average, or want to compare an athlete within any of those environments. These are required to perform those calculations and to perform those comparisons. We also have season phase which we just saw in our dashboard, how those season phases can work and be valuable to us. There's training phase as well, which we don't quite get into, and season. Ultimately, we create an event ID, which is what we saw in that selection list in our dashboard. After that, we just have a bunch of performance metrics. For me, we gauge athlete performance on counter movement jumps, which we collect three trials of, broad jumps, 10 meter sprints, all these different things that we use to quantify an athlete's performance in our environment. These can be any metrics that you like. These are just mine, but I want to show you what you'll be provided with so that when you receive this, you can contextualize this information in your environment and input your data appropriately. There'll be a lot more detail in the tutorial videos. In addition to this data set, you will receive a data set of athlete profiles. This is a really important data set to have. You'll have my athlete profiles, and you want to replace them with your own. And again, more detail will be provided in the tutorial videos for how to go about this. And the final thing that you receive in this download will be a home tab. When you ever have any questions, go here. In the home tab, there will be an overview of what the scope of this project is, alongside my contact information and some additional resources for you to use. I hope that this video was helpful in getting you started with the athlete performance testing portion of the Ultimate Athlete Monitoring Toolkit. I look forward to seeing you in the tutorial videos.